And, uh, yep. Still an upper area we can go to. And also this. Kill all your livestock, Harry. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's any gems around here, no. Alright. Yeah, also, also they, uh, they made the charge a lot better in this game compared to the first game, too. Because that game, it was a lot more straightforward, I guess, in terms of movement. In here, I think it's slower, but there's a lot more sense of control. So... Oh, no. Well... I'm definitely curious to see how it play- how these games play in- in Reignited. Alright, we're gonna find the Professor somewhere. I forget where he is. I think he was- Wait, isn't that just playing hockey freely now? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I uh, appreciate little things like that. It's just a little teeming world. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely I definitely like this game's world a lot compared to the first. I think he's in there. Oh, hi. This game messes with my type A personality. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, so the things we've been seeing all this time, we gotta flame them now. So, pretty self explanatory. Alright, where is the. Where, how many gems are we missing? Quite a bit. 35. Oh, I think it's from that chest. There should be a fireworks thing somewhere. I thought you had to head bash it. No, well, I, you might be able to, but I don't think that gets you gems. Alright. Oh, there's gems over there. Yeah, the levels in this game uh, take a lot longer to finish overall, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing per se, but there is one level in particular that goes on for quite a while. Or maybe a few, but there's one that sticks out like a sore farm. Thanks. If one of the gems, okay, one of them did drop. And that should be so, every, yep, there we go. Ta da! <laughs> what do you, what do you think about, like, the level length in this game? Like, compared to the first game, anyway? Um, I thought it was fine, it's... Since you're not, <clears throat> since there's a more clearly set goal, you know, pretty much... Like, the main missions are fine, you'll get through yeah. them quickly. The meat technically actually comes from everything you do after. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, I think I missed some. Uh. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't mind. Like there being extra stuff or fluff. I, I don't know what what you call it, but like, there's more things to do compared to the first game. Like, I feel like the first game at War War has welcome quicker than this one. Mm. <clears throat> uh, I I would disagree personally, but 
again, I think as a world, Avalar is more interesting, and I do like the added addition of minigames and such, but level design-wise, I don't think it's as fun to play, or fun to go through them as Spyro 1, because I feel like Spyro 1 uh, had a lot more... I, I, I guess, like, tri not really tricky platforming, but, like, um, it felt like it was trying to do more of the 3D space, um, I guess, where, like, you go, you have to go through the a bottom area, and then you find your way up to higher areas, and it kind of has a lot of aha moments, if you will, uh, where you figure stuff out, and then you get more gems, and, um, I don't know, I'm not, like, I'm not saying that's not the case in this game, but it's nowhere near as prevalent, and, um, I generally, I generally like the fact that Spyro 1 has kind of a snappy kind of feel to it, like, you don't really stay in one stage for too long, and it just keeps going, and, I don't know. If you're going for every gem, you're going to be there for a while. Oh gosh, I hate treetops. Yeah, treetops. Yeah, I, I, I won't. Yeah, I, I won't defend treetops, but you know. And where is this last thing? I don't think it's around here, is it? No. Don't you get a skill point from burning down all the banners? Um... I don't know... I don't think so. Oh gosh, this camera's making me dizzy. What am I missing? <laughs> oh wait. Wow. <laughs> Never mind. Well done, Spyro. You've scared the evil spirit away. Why don't you take this? I borrowed it from the temple. Here they don't. I can't wait to have uh, people like screaming at their uh, TVs or whatever computer screens. <laughs> and now he finished. Whoa. That should be it. Dead. Yeah, there's a lot of murder in this game. <laughs> take oh, it. I'm sure he's all right. Take that as you will. I mean, it's like cartoony dark humor. Well, now we can finally learn how to swim. Hello there, Spyro. Would you like to learn to swim underwater? I suppose I could teach you for <laughs> a small fee. Great. Okay. When you jump in the water, you can use the D-pad to move around the surface. Use square to dive underwater. When you are underwater, use X to paddle and square to charge. Thankfully, swimming in this game feels really good, unlike uh, the uh, ice physics. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to backtrack so we can get some gems around the other areas. Oh. One of the best swimming controls and it's one of the best underwater swimming controls in a video game. Yeah. Because, uh, swimming, uh, underwater swimming, oh, hi. Yeah, just, like, things you expect from a platformer. Or a, a collector phone, rather. Just use this and it tells you general progression, which is nice. Uh, but... It's kind of funny how she was there, like, she expected me to backtrack, which is kind of funny. Uh, but... Yeah, the thing of the underworld swimming in a lot of games is that they usually have an issue of pace, I guess, compared to, like, on-foot levels, where 
swimming controls are a lot slower, and for that, because of that, they make underwater levels a lot slower paced compared to the main stages, which isn't really the case for Spyro, because as you can see, you can just, like, do the charge move and it makes you go really fast, and you can afford to do that for most of your time underwater. And you can still breathe fire underwater for some reason. I think you can burn a seaweed too. Um, I don't... We oh, you can't. You'll yeah. need... No, never mind. Yeah, you need the super, super flame. But... Yeah, I like the swimming, swimming in this game and, and the third game. And I think uh, this is the only, uh, like, I think, uh, was it, uh, the home homeworlds are the only uh, areas that have orbs that are hidden in the, in the world, in the world space or whatever, in the, uh, in the actual, like, stages themselves, they're, like, tied behind, like, mini games and such, which is kind of interesting, I kind of would have liked more of those things where you could just find them, because... You know, I like finding collectibles, but... You like collecting things in your collectathons? Okay. Yep. <laughs> but now we can go to Idle Springs and actually play the stage, so... Let's do this before we move on. Honestly, they could have had hidden orbs and replaced them with some of the uh, some of the infamous minigames, to be honest. I wouldn't have minded. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's when you know you're desperate. <laughs> yep. I think uh, one thing they could have done is just made it so Ripto brought the statues to life. I was under the impression that he did bring them to life. Yeah, I think that's said. I think they that they say that in the manual, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, it's never brought up in the game itself, and it's just again an issue of like Ripto never being mentioned by the characters really outside of the, like the main cast. Um, and you know, it, ma it makes it again. It makes it every world's problems feel unique. But you know, at the cost, cost of the villain. But yeah, we just needed the underworld swimming so we can get through here and do like three. I think that this mini game has like three parts to it. So. Yeah, so he, he, if you talk to him, it will just reset it. Like, if you... The, basically, the best way I can describe this, it works pretty much the same way as the way you unlock Final Egg in Sonic Adventure, where, like, you press a button and it activates the two switches or or squares um, in front and behind you, and you have to try and find a way to activate all of them. Um, so, let's see here. Uh, Alright, uh... And the best stuff like this, so this might be a bit. Oh, we some water. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Okay, I got it. Cool. Wow, Spyro, you did it! I mean, I knew you could do it. Now, meet me at the front for the next challenge. Hmm. 
Oh, I held back. Yep, you're just in time because we just cleared it. Alright, second mission. So yeah, self-explanatory. I think the red fish are the ones you don't you don't want to feed. Why in the world does it eat fish? Uh well I mean like he's kinda stuck here I guess, so it's like the only thing he can eat. Oops. Yeah, it's pretty easy, all things considered. Just try not to be too trigger happy. Oh, come on. <laughs> the sound, their fish sounds like the fish effects. It's like those bandicoot fish hybrids from Crash Warped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So many reds. He doesn't like Swedish fish. Mm -hmm. Right now I want Swedish fish. Gives you a little leeway, which is nice. Also, if you do give him a red fish, then he does spit all the fish out, so you have to start again, so... And that's later on in the stage, so we're just gonna have to play the level like normal for now. But, yep. Oh, he actually hit him. No. But I, I like, I like the setup for these stages where like, there's a main problem you need to take care of, and it goes on like a linear path. Um, and then you get the talismans, because I, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I like the fact that there's a main goal in the stages now, that you have to resolve, and, you know, because in the first game, it was, you just, it was, a, it was a free for all, yeah, you just had to get, get the dragons, and the gems, around the stages, the, the levels themselves didn't really have an ongoing story going on or anything, Yep, so, you know, if you play Spyro 1, then you, uh, know how, how enemies work. Some, some you have to flame, some you have to charge, and, yeah, that's how it goes, really. Would you, what, what's your opinion on, like, the world of, like, Avalar, I guess, and, like, the... The uh, levels and stuff. The hub world, or uh, hub worlds, I guess, are atmospheric. They do their job. Uh, excuse me. See, I'm a little motion sick from the camera with flashing around. Oh. <laughs> um, levels themselves are fine. They, <clears throat> again, like, they. Like they're a lot, a lot more toggle to go through now that they've got some level of what's the word? They're a bit more structured now. Yeah, they, they had, yeah, they definitely have more structure than the first game. I would agree with that. Like there's less psychological stress if you can just get a yeah. have a main goal and you can leave after that. Yeah. There's also. A lot less um, uh, risk of uh, dying in this game compared to the first one. Um, now, if I remember this correctly, it's uh, this. No. Alright, no. I think I know what to do. Diamond? No. It's probably the star then. 
And then... Ah, dang it. Probably... Um... Okay, I see now. Yep. There we go. Nice job, Clyro. You're pretty smart for a dragon. All I have to give you is this shiny thing I found in our toolbox. Already got eight of them. I believe there's sixty-four orbs in total, which are uh, funny. <laughs> Uh, it really sent you all the way back. Yeah, it, it probably should have just uh, warped you back over there. It doesn't take too long, I guess, so it's not the worst thing, but... Yep. No, I forgot what we, what we were saying, what we were talking about. Level, structure, and... Something after that. Yeah. And I think this is the end of the main stage. Yeah, you can usually tell when it's the end of the stage when you see a, like a, a, a banner thing and like a character's next to it. I didn't even realize that. It's like a Mario flag. Oh yeah! I didn't think about that. It's kind of cool, actually, yeah. I really do appreciate that they let Sparks pick up nearby gems for the flare. Yeah, like that... Ooh. Okay, I got that. I don't think you. I don't think you're supposed to go up there that way. Uh, but yeah, it's just really satisfying, like Sparks grabbing stuff for you. Like for a game like this, it just it feels nice not to be able not to have to like pick up each individual collectible like by yourself. Right, we're gonna have to do some platforming around here first. Yeah, ho oh yeah, I remember what I was talking about. Uh, like, g in terms of like uh, di general difficulty, um, this game is probably I I'd say overall this is probably the easiest Spyro game out of the trilogy. Um, it's definitely a lot harder to die in this game compared to the first one. Uh, for starters, um, and the platforming is a lot less taxing overall. Um, there are some mini games that are a pain, but I feel like overall Spyro 3 itself, uh, the mini games in that game, I find to be a lot more challenging as a whole, and the world. Not always for the right reasons. Not always for the right reasons, but I um I think Spyro 3 does a better job in difficulty balancing than this game does. Because for the most for the most part, this game's pretty easy with those, like, difficulty spikes that really don't deserve to be difficulty spikes. Um, but, you know, either way. I think this is a very good introduction to the Spyro series. Like, if you want to get into the series, I feel like this is a pretty good starting point to go to. It's not too difficult. It's not too easy. It's it's just right in the middle. Um, and, you know, you're not going to have really frustrating levels like treetops. Or you're not going to have to worry about learning multiple characters like Spyro 3. And as a just this game generally has a good focus. So, um, like, if you want a comfortable experience, and you want to get into the Spyro series, I'd say this would be a good way, place to start. What would you say? 
I pretty much agree with everything you said. <laughs> I feel like Spyro, excuse me, Spyro one hardest thing was the platforming in the levels because there's a lot of floating continents. Yeah. Like Spyro two, you're more likely to get screwed over by the mission by the mini game missions. Yeah. And I'm I'm ignoring the flight levels because they're both they can both be pretty challenging in both games. Yep. And you have to. You, yeah, quick thing, you have to get on this idol to get a skill point. I think that's the only one in this level, so... Yeah. You can continue. Unless you are pretty much done. <laughs> oh, I think I'm done. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna get the gems first before I do this. You know, I don't remember this mission at all. <laughs> Alright, go with the gems. Yeah, just use a supercharge, which is coming back and I already failed. Yeah, you want to try and get it in one, one pass, because otherwise... We're gonna have to do the one you missed. Yeah, they they they, they just go flying back. So you wanna do it in one pass. There we go. Camera isn't really helping matters. No, nah, not really. <laughs> yeah, this game has a lot of charm. Which I appreciate. The world, I, I like, because they they're in a world that's not the dragon realms. They have a bit more freedom to do what they want. I feel. As you can, uh, you keep an eye on like the time. As well. We're about an hour and a half in. Alright. Anything going on in the Discord chat? Oh, I can exit out. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Was he holding that rope, that weenie in the water all that time? <laughs> yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. You probably. Ugh. Sounds disgusting. Yeah. Like. Oh, wet. Unless it was holding it in the place that everyone else saw and cared to hold chaos emeralds. I mean, that works too. Yeah, the, the home worlds are also a lot larger than the ones in the first game. Still better traverse through. Yeah. They're probably the largest homeworlds in the series because uh, Spyro 3, um, they, there's, I think there's four in that game, but they're, they're a lot more condensed, I guess you could say. Which we can't learn until we get into the second hub, uh, which goes goes into what we were just talking about earlier. But either way, but like, I I I do like the huh? What were you saying? No, I, I was just gonna say like I do like the ambience, the ha home home worlds have like the especially with the music, but. A gem cutter said they couldn't are too short to climb the ladders, but who so who built them? Yeah. It's literally like a flat texture on a wall. 
Like, uh, it's funny. It's like old, old, uh, was this like f fifth, sixth gen? Fifth gen. Yeah. You'll find pain. Yep, speedways are back. They more or less work the same way. But, uh, with some changes. I mean, they're better than the ones in the first game, but... Still, they... Yeah, they were weird in the first... The, the first game is weird. They had a balance issue in that, because the first one you do is one of the harder ones. Like, I feel like there's a lot less room for error in the first one. Um, they all suck. <laughs> they're fun to play, but the difficulty could be balanced better. Oh, man. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, we're not gonna do that right now, we're just getting the gems we can. Does no one seem to be worried about the fact that... ...that he's basically extorting Spyro to help save them? Eh. <laughs> Man. I mean, there, there's a thing that happens in the uh, third game that's just super satisfying. I think you know what, you, what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you think of Crush and Gulp as like uh, like those two like um, henchmen or whatever? I feel like I've heard you ask, it, ask me this in a dream. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my goodness, this is funny. What happened in the dream? <laughs> I think I just said they exist. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's actually hilarious. So, like, you had a dream of doing Spyro 2? <laughs> I guess so. Oh, man. I remember having a dream once where I was in my, in high school, I think. Um, and in, and, uh, in a dream, we, there, there was, like, a list of games all of us LP'd, because apparently, because <laughs> apparently, um, all of us as a class do let's plays, I guess. I don't know, it was weird. 